Tag, mein Freunden. Ich bin Funky Monkey. Willkommen zu mein Liebchen Haus. And thank you, Mr. Blue Text, for translating from the German. Now then, what is it about the Nazis that makes them such good villains? The mesmerizing iconography, the unflinching ideological purity in their goal of Aryan supremacy, the hive-minded unity of their foot soldiers, plus of course the little fact that they've become the poster children for the fascist method, all of which blends together to create the perfect antagonist against whom any anti-hero looks as pure as Superman himself. Which brings me to today's topic, Iron Sky. Released in 2012, Iron Sky is the tale of a secret colony of Nazis that escaped to the moon in the last days of World War II. Discovered by accident 73 years later, they return to Earth as heroes. Though, of course, they have other plans. So, shine up your boots, straighten up your tie, and for the love of Bree, do something about that dreadfully messy barnet of yours. Because we've got a Nazi invasion to repel. Under the Iron Sky. The year is 2018, and model James Washington is part of a PR stunt. On the moon. But Washington is ambushed and captured. Inside the facility, we learn that aliens speak German. Und was ist das, Herr Adler? Ein Spion von der Erde. Yes, these moon dwellers are all too human and all too Nazi. Also, is anyone else really digging that subtitle font choice? But our protagonist escapes his captors. Only to chance on the airlock. No! Well, would you know that a precious loose was an airlock? I certainly wouldn't. Luckily, nobody dies. If only because of Washington's smart mouth. But he's still taken to the mad doctor's lab for questioning. My uh, kick-ass cell phone and the computer. Yeah, it's pretty amazing when you think about it. An entire computer in the palm of your hand. What an age we live in. And Washington's smartphone is all the Nazis need to power up their space battleship, the Götterdammerung. Universal systematic binding. Fascinating how these things develop in parallel, isn't it? Lucky for the rest of us, then, that smartphone batteries don't stay charged that long. That's the downside to this modern technology. I mean, I keep mine virtually tethered to its charge cable. Which reminds me, I should probably plug it in again. <laughs> Renata, the female lead, returns to Washington and is overcome with his otherness. Please, I mean, you have met a brother. But her father, the mad scientist, has a cure for that. Now, I've done some research on the minority black population of Nazi Germany, and while they weren't eradicated like the Jews and the gays, they weren't exactly treated as equals either. And so our protagonists head for the Earth, with an albanized Washington in tow. Which leads to some awkwardness when our protagonists attempt to commandeer transport, Aryanization ain't gonna fly with a black dude. It's just not cool. And worse, Washington is dumped. In favor of campaign manager Vivian Wagner. Renata schools Vivian in the propaganda of the Fourth Reich. This is gonna work. Which leads them to the president. The world's weary, but we are the strength. 
vague platitudes can be molded to fit any agenda. The same way that our fathers carried us, and their fathers carried them. See what I mean? Cut to three months later, and Washington is trying to warn the populace. Do you know this? Yes! But never. This is The Great Dictator, Charlie Chaplin's only sound picture, and a satire on Hitler's rise to power. The Moon Nazi approved version takes a short sequence where Chaplin is playing with a globe and presents it as the whole feature. Spot the subtle differences. Renata is all turned around. And almost turned over by a bunch of neo-Nazis. They were the symbol of love. Never heard it called that before. Actually, as is pointed out in this film, the swastika was used by Hindus, Buddhists, and Jainists for millennia before it was co-opted by the Nazis. Talk about cultural appropriation. Adler is caught in flagrante by the current Führer, who looks to put an end to this insurrection. But Vivian has other plans. As does Adler. Heil, Adler. But Renata convinces Washington to return to the moon with her. And so the stage is set for our finale, as the nations of the world engage in glorious battle. While Washington and Renata sneak onto the Gotterdammerung. Renata heads for the bridge, and a final showdown with Klaus Adler. Right, Nazis are stupid. The old Nazi saluted to the light socket trick is the oldest one in the book. And so, our movie ends happily for our heroes. But not for the Earth. And why? Well, the short answer is that it's an energy and territorial dispute blown way out of proportion. But, you know, fractious nations and all. Anyway, that was Iron Sky. Not a terrible movie by any standards. But I really can't put this one into my house of love. This is about as B-movie as it gets, folks. A Finnish director, a story of moon Nazis, an albanized black hero, for want of a better description, gore, swears, sex, and even a little social commentary. And yes, it's hard going at times, but there is a viciously satirical undercurrent to this movie. The casting is masterful. Gotz Otto's Klaus Adler is every inch the aspiring ruler of the world, with the hair trigger temper to match. The plot is about as crazy as a movie about moon Nazis should be, although even at a slender 90 minutes, it does feel thin in places. It takes a while to get going, although the character moments do build affinity. And affinity, outside of Renata and James Washington, is in short supply. But then, where Nazis are concerned, I doubt likability is that high up on the agenda. Where the bulk of the money went though, was the effects. The ginormous USS George W. Bush pretty much spoke volumes about the director's opinion of America. And on that point, there were very few characters or countries that got out of this movie anywhere approaching clean. Overall then, Iron Sky is a mad, blue screen heavy, satire laden sci-fi actioner whose only real problem is its leaden pacing. It feels far too slow for a movie about moon Nazi invasion and is surprisingly light on conflict for an action film. Still, as bad movies go, this is pretty damn good. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days, good movies, and a distinct lack of Nazis. Tschüss, mein Freunden!
join the heroic legion of Patreon subscribers today. You could get your name in the credits, early access to new episodes, request your favourite game, movie or anime to be reviewed, or even be in the show yourself. Sign up at my Patreon site. I'll see you there.